G'day guys, Jake here. <coughs> Today I'm going to be showing you how to turn up your malware filter and configure a couple of things inside of Office 365 Exchange. So by default it is set to the lowest setting, which if you find that you're getting spam or you may be worried about malware and want to secure your environment a bit more, you can follow these steps. So basically you need to go into the admin center and inside of this little drop down here you'll have admin centers and you can go into your exchange admin center. So the process here I believe is the same with exchange on premise which I haven't actually used 2013 on premise for a fair while but last time I did use it it looked pretty much the same. So this is the exchange admin center You've got this section here, protection, which also maps up to this protection here. So let's go into protection and see what we've got. By default, you've got the lowest priority on your malware filter. So let's go in and see the settings on the malware filter. We can go into settings. Malware detection is delete the uh, entire message. You can also delete all the attachments and just use text and we've you can block the common attachments used so like if we turn this on it would block all of these which i'm going to guess xe's in it jar for jar files vis, um, visual basic scripts all that sort of stuff we could you can add more file types so if you wanted to add another file type in here you can hit this little plus Uh, don't worry about that, that's just my phone. This might be glitching out because Firefox or my internet's really, really annoying. And you can go through here and let's say we didn't want to allow DLLs, we didn't want to allow INF files, .js files, um, what else don't I like? don't want to allow MSI installers, uh, we don't want to allow PowerShell scripts, or VBS. Okay, so now we've got a bunch more in there. Um, you can do it so it notifies internal users or notifies external users. So if somebody is sending you a malicious attachment, you can actually have Office 365 notify them saying this email is blocked because it doesn't meet the security requirements. We can notify the administrators if we want to. So that can be handy. Um, you can customize the notifications too. So you could go from name as in, you know, my company administrator and add in those settings and that's on the lowest priority so this isn't like it's secure it's got a fair bit of good stuff but you can secure it down more with those things we can also add in um, more rules so if you wanted in to add in a second rule let's say um, big rule doesn't really matter and you only wanted it to apply if the recipient is and you can set different people to have different rules so you could have all employees let's say Ben Waters gets a different um, thing than everyone else and then in here we'll say oh yep that so this could be good for like say you've got a section of users which aren't very IT savvy like let's just I know we're picking on a whole demographic but let's say the warehousing team their main job is to go out to the warehouse and pick things up and do stuff their primary role is not computers they're not that computer savvy in this hypothetical organization you could set a different rule for those people that only 
select that group of users. And then that group could be blocked from receiving all sorts of different attachments. So here you can do a connection filter as well. Which at the moment is just the default rule. So this is where you can do a IP block list, IP allow list, and all that fun stuff. So if you've got a bunch of IPs that you don't want to send to you, or you want to block out a whole country, you can do that there. In our spam filter, we can also change the settings in here. So by default, spam is moved to the junk email folder. We could also have it quarantine the message, delete the message, or redirect it to a different email address. If it's definitely spam, we could just have it delete it if we wanted to. Um, you can pick how long quarantines go. Same thing here with the block lists. We can do the same stuff and also allow lists. Internal spam, we can act international, I mean, we can filter things written in different languages. So if you didn't want to get anything written in Bosnian, because you know nobody's going to write to you in Bosnian or Croatian or I don't even know what language that is. Greenlandic, we know we don't have any customers in Bosnia, Croatia, or that speak those languages, and it will just block anything sent to you in those things, in those languages, and we can filter emails that come in from regions. So if you're getting it hit with a lot of spam from Russia, and you've been put on some lists, and you're just getting hammered, you can actually block a whole country here. And here's some advanced options, which it's all right. Outbound spam. For the outbound spam, if we think there's outbound spam, we can have it sent to the administrator. Now this can be really useful in the case that one of your computers gets infected and is spamming out from your organization. This means that if Office 365 or Exchange, or depending which way you're using it, if either of the, if that believes that there is outbound spam being sent, it can tell the administrator. So this can stop you from being put on block lists, from sending things that people don't want to get, and alert you to threats that may be inside of your organization or even on a like in this world of BYOD and all that stuff where people have their emails hooked up to their own personal computers that you have no control over this can be really useful as well because you're not managing somebody's computer at home so you don't monitor if they've got a virus but if they've got their emails hooked up on their computer at home and it's sending out spam through your organization. It can make you look bad. It can put you on block lists and all the other stuff that it can do. I'm sure you've heard what happens with the um, when you start spending out spam. In the quarantine, you can check for any quarantined emails. That's fairly obvious. The action center. So here is where you can see if accounts have been blocked, the reason, the date. Anyway, so that was just me going through some of the malware and spam protection features inside of Exchange or Office 365. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm sure to, I'm very happy to answer them. If you have any requests for me doing other videos, let me know as well. And I'll... Um, have a nice day and I'll see you all later.